Well, hello and welcome back to those of you who are tuning back in or for those of you that are tuning in for the very first time to Hope Revealed. I'm your host, Matt Crump, and I come to you every Tuesday, the best of my ability, <laughs> with episodes about hope and health and healing. Sometimes we'll have guests that give us great information in, in the area of help with the world's health and health care, as well as to find hope through some of the information that's shared. As a person myself that's been battling stage 4 cancer for quite some time, I, I wanted to bring a platform to you that would specifically bring help as well as hope. And that can be done through our special guests, information I've been able to find and receive, just some of my study times myself, the things God speaks to my heart, and then other times it's things I get from you, our listeners. If you'd like to send something to me that is something that we could consider for a podcast or for our blog, I'd love for you to do that by just reaching out to us at community at godsgotthis.love. Again, that's community at godsgotthis.love for your questions, comments, and content. So on today's episode, we're going to talk about three little words, three little words that mean something different every time you say it. So without further ado, I'm going to go outside for a little bit. It's almost dark. I'm going to share a few things with you, and then we'll come right back in the studio. See you in just a minute. So over the past few weeks, days, months, I guess, <laughs> I've been talking about uh, things like time, relative and all the posts that I've been making, different different videos and uh, blogs that I've been talking about. It's all relative to, to the word time. Here's another time thing for you. 24-7, right? Everybody has the same 24 hours in a day. Yet why does it seem sometimes that a day could drag on so long and other times it feels like it just flies by, right? Another thing that uh, I thought about recently is is the two words, anything is possible. Okay, so that's three words. Anything is possible. That's a fantastic thing. To know that sometimes in our lives that anything's possible. It's a great scripture. With God, all things are possible, right? Yet with time, thought processes of what's happening in our lives, that other three word phrase, anything is possible, could really be a scary thing quick break for those listening to ask you to stop by our Facebook group page and join today. I love this old car. I spent a lot of time working on it. It spent a lot of time in a field in Texas for like 40 years. Just sat rotten away. Just amazing to think about the times that were spent in this vehicle. The stories that could be told of the conversations that occurred in this in this vehicle that's that's 81 years old. I love to be a part of something like that, to experience time in such a unique way. To be able to, to touch it and to feel like you're a part of something much bigger than yourself. Because anything's possible. Sand Hills Music. I had this store in our community for about 10 years. And I went from a little tiny store in the back streets of a small downtown area to having one of the largest music stores in our community uh, near our mall. It was uh, in the largest shopping district of our community. I don't say that to be boastful. I was excited. I was happy. I was proud. It was my dream. The, the last store that I had, the last facility, was just about everything I had dreamed of. It was the style, the look, the layout. It was, it was just about perfect. When I was there, looking around, I'd come in on, on mornings and just observe, be alone with me and the Lord, and, and I would think, wow, anything's possible. You know as well as I do that sometimes things are just, they're just funny the way they work out, right? Like. My wife and I, we're really, really blessed that what's behind me in this uh, yard, it's ours, it's our home, it's where we live, and I'm, I'm very happy to be here, and it's been a joy. We've been here for, goodness, I don't know, maybe almost 11 years in this house now, and um, a few things, you know, over a period of time when the house gets a little older, you need to do some things, and we were in a need of, of a new roof. Well, it's not cheap, it's a big roof, so... Uh, we were kind of just waiting around and figuring out 
what we would do and save some money to be able to get a new roof. And then we had a hurricane and some really bad rainstorms. In the midst of those periods of time, we incurred some, some pretty bad damage to our roof. The tree went through the back here in my shop and it was pretty, pretty rough. It caused some damage inside. It wasn't pleasant, but through it all, with the insurance claim, we got a brand new roof. <laughs> we didn't even have to pay for it after we had been saving up for that to get a new roof because the roof was so damaged it had to be replaced anyway. That's amazing, right? You know what I'm about to say. Anything's possible. For those of you that know me, have been following me anytime recently, uh, well, of course, if this is recorded, so this is uh, uh, March 2019, you know that uh, recently I had a, a pretty devastating situation happen in my life where uh, my goddaughter, uh, Kaylin, who was my nurse at Duke when I had the brain tumor, she was tragically killed in an automobile accident in Washington State. She was on her way home from work. It was late one night and it was a snowstorm and it didn't turn out well, obviously. I could go through the details, but that's not the important part of this conversation. You can put two and two together. I think what's important to understand is life, time, there's some valuable, valuable things. And there's many times we don't think about it that way. We take things for granted. Anything's possible. All right, back in my studio, we have a chance just to sit down with one another for a moment. And I'm glad if you're watching today or happen to be listening to the podcast, maybe you're reading the blog, and I'd like to share a few things with you about time and, and anything is possible. I've got four signs that I'd like to share with you that it's time to adjust your mindset. So ultimately, how you look at your life is, is what it'll take to make you happy or unhappy. When you're consumed with negative thoughts and, and beliefs and you discover that you're unhappy with your life, eventually your perception of the world, it, it becomes your reality. I've seen it so many times from so many different people and examples. I'm sure things can come to your mind in your own life, maybe some people that you know, right? This is why changing your mindset is so important because it will make a substantial difference in your life and newsflash a lot of other people's lives too so i'd like to share with you these four signs how you can change your mindset all right number one you focus on everything that's wrong i'm not telling you to do that i'm telling you that's what's happening so a sure indication that you need to shift your mindset is when you continuously fix your attention on the disappointments and on the worry in your life. So to change this mindset, you need to take some time, time to think about the things that you're thankful for in your life. You can easily come up with the stuff that bugs you, right? Stop, change, think about some things that you're thankful for in life, right? This will help keep the negative thoughts from overwhelming your perspective. All right, number one, focus on everything that's wrong. Quit doing that. Start focusing on some things that are right. All right, so here's number two. You refuse to face the truth. Oh, yeah, complaining about it all the time doesn't really change anything. You know, it always complaining about your life is, is really a refusal to acknowledge and accept the truth. If you keep complaining about things, you're not really accepting truth. There are things in your life that you just can't change. <laughs> and refusing to see reality, its, it's result is you no longer are, are able to separate fact from fiction. You actually start to believe a lie. Your own lie in most cases. 
you talked yourself into something that's not true. And then for you, it becomes truth. <laughs> to change this, you have to take action. You have to change those things that you can change and accept the things that you can't. All right, what do I mean by that? Um, all right, so I'll use my cancer as an example. I can't change the fact that I had cancer, that I've been fighting cancer, and all the side effects. Now, to take action, I can start eating different, uh, change my life schedule around a bit for more rest and time to give my body uh, moments to recoup. I could look for different types of medications, different things to help me. I, as a Christian, can stand on God's Word and believe things from my life and my body that He's promised to me in the Bible. Those are things I could take action on. So I can't change some of the other stuff, but I can change the way I deal with it. And in most cases, when you take action in truth, it changes everything. Because anything is possible. All right, number three. This is a little tough one. Uh, tough for me to read because, y'all, a lot of the stuff I'm telling you is not just stuff that I made up. The stuff that's coming from life, right? A lot of it from my own. You know, I, I, I talk to a lot of different people, a lot of different places, but wow, this stuff is, is hitting home today. All right, number three. You become angry when your expectations aren't met. Ooh, all right. So a large part of our mindset, your mindset, my mindset, consists of expectations. These are what you believe to be possible and necessary. If you're always angry with the people in your life because they aren't meeting your expectations, it means that you have unrealistic expectations to start with. E I had a lot of time to wrestle with the fact that I'm a perfectionist. I guess I'm made that way. Uh, I'm not made to stay that way. I um, have learned a lot of things in my life and a lot of my frustrations have come from that perfectionism. And it was not until I became a disciple and started learning about things from Jesus that I realized that he hasn't called us to perfection, but he's called us to excellence. There's a big difference. Perfection says it has to be done a certain way. If it's not done a certain way, that's it. It's, you're, it's over. Excellence means you give it everything you've got and keep on going. All right, get ready to write this part down. This is really good. If you're listening, get some notes, pause, get ready for this one, write it down. It's our expectations that lay the groundwork for our experiences. But if you have unrealistic expectations for yourself and for those around you, you will never be satisfied with your life. Oh, you want me to say that again? Rewind. But if you have unrealistic expectations for yourself and for those around you, you will never be satisfied with your life. Oh. It's so hard sometimes, I know, to be able to not act out of anger and frustration. If anybody has kids, I don't even say anything more, right? <laughs> it can be tough. It's real tough. I've been convicted and convinced lately a lot of some of the things in my own life. And God's been dealing with me lately. And I'm working on, on creating some new exercises for myself to be able to model the life that Christ wanted me to model as a husband, as a father, as a unifier of my home. And uh, I'm working on that. Don't let what gets you angry and upset from your expectations ruin everything for you. Evaluate your expectations. You might find they're just a little bit out of reach. Please hang up and try again. All right, number four. This is going to be a fun one. Are you ready? You sure? All right, here we go. You always see yourself as the victim. Yeah. 
When you always see yourself as a victim, you're hindering your ability to change things and create a better life for yourself. A victim mentality is typically a byproduct of low self-esteem. If you want to change your mindset, you have to reject the victim role and start building something better for your life. It's not easy. It's like I was talking about before. Once you do these things, once you believe the lie, it's really hard to get out of it. Once you've really learned how to live as a victim, gosh, it's hard to be an overcomer. Not impossible. <laughs> because anything is possible. Changing your mindset, it isn't always easy. That's not a newsflash, right? But it, it's, it's one of the most powerful things you can do for yourself. To make a decision, to make a choice, to say, I'm gonna do this, this is gonna happen, is a big deal. Learn how to recognize when you have a negative mindset and make, make the necessary changes to become more positive. Do a, a negative positive analysis of your life. What are some of the negative things you have going on? What are some of the negative things you feel, experience, see? What's the positive side? What can you do different to experience something positive and make some of those changes? I'm gonna tell you that you can. Because I'm gonna tell you, anything is possible. All right, folks, just a short one this week that I've been trying to wrap up some thoughts uh, for the past couple of weeks and a month. I've had a lot going on in my life as well, and I'm getting back into the swing of things. It's been a very difficult time in my life and I have a lot to do. And I'm not going to allow a lot of things that have been holding me back to hold me back. It's time to move forward. There's a time where you have to pick up and move on, and that's what I'm doing. I'm excited that God's opened up some doors in my life to bring some things to me that may help my health and my healing process uh, be even better, where I can feel better in life and get my quality of life back. I'm praying and believing God for that going through some healing emotionally. I'm glad for some of those things to occur in my life. It's going to be fantastic. So there's a lot of great things that, that have happened to me, even though I've had some really horrible things happen to me. Anything's possible, right? So today, those four things that are going to be, uh, you can get into the blog. If you go to the uh, godsgotthis.love, you can visit our blog page, and I'll post these up for you to read and follow along with. And if you're at our podcast, which is at Podbean, so it's uh, godsgotthis.podbean.com, uh, I'd love for you to actually uh, go there and, and click on the podcast there and subscribe to it. It would be fantastic. And please share with everybody that, as well as on iTunes. I'm there as well. So there's two things there with the podcast. I want you to share it. Podbean's the home. iTunes is the home. But if it goes to iTunes, gets lots of shares, it gets me bumped up in some rankings and people get to know who I am a little bit better and we can help share this information with the world. Would you help me to do that? I'd appreciate it. And it's even better when you make a review or click a star or do something, let me know you're there. Uh, I would love to have some comments. Come on back with some stuff. You may have something a thousand times better than I would have to say. And if you don't say it, it doesn't help anybody. So I'd love for you to make some comments um, at our pod site, our pod site, at the podcast site, uh, our blog page, uh, our YouTube channel where this is going to be at as well. I'm going to start combining my podcasts and our God's Got This uh, Meaningful Moments uh, put together uh, into one. So it uh, helps combine what I'm doing and save some time for me, right? It's going to be fantastic. All right, so these four things, uh, and I got a little gift I want to give to you in a second. These four things that I have to share with you again from today on the list of how to adjust your mindset. You have to recognize some things and change some things. Number one, you focus on everything that's wrong. Two, you refuse to face the truth. Three, you become angry when your expectations aren't met. And four, you always see yourself as a victim. That's what happens when you're stuck into a place that your mindset stinks. And there's things you have to do to change to make it better. We talked about that today. Now, I also want to let you know that I have something I'd like to give to you. If you're uh, listening today, I'll put it in the comment section. If you're at the blog, there will be a link here for you to do that as well. And I talked about trying to give you some thought processes to 
look for some things that are positive, try to find some other things to think about. I'm going to get you started. I've got a list I'm going to give you of 30 life principles. It's a free PDF I'll give you that you can download. And it's just 30 phrases that could get the ball rolling for you. I think if you look at those things, they may give you some incentive to think of something better for yourself, something positive. And uh, I'd love to hear what that might be. So uh, visit our website at godsgotthis.love. If you haven't already been there to sign up for our mailing list, I'd love you to because I send stuff out like this all the time and I'd love to be able to bless you. And when there's great things happening in our community, you'll be able to find out through the mailing list, through a n newsletter that we have out there. And uh, we'll send you this um, absolutely free, 30 Life Principles, it'll be yours. Also, a little commercial for um, my new book. It is called, if you are on the video today, you'll see it. It is godsgotthis.love. Imagine that, God's got this, right? So inside the book, you'll find a lot of different stories that are going to help you to understand uh, what a God's got this moment is all about. I tried to give you that through this book, through the examples, so you can kind of catch how to do this for yourself. So at the end of the book, Chapter one is actually the last chapter. The last chapter, you're going to find three tools that will explain to you everything about a God's got this moment. Three, three tools that you'll have are reflect, receive, and respond. You'll get it when you read the book. And at the end of each chapter in the book, you'll find a two-page journal. And at the end, of, you'll find it's the color stuff after all the black and white you're reading. You'll come to a two pages of color. And in those two pages, there are questions set up for you to help you to to create a, a space where you could think of a moment for yourself that something happened. You'll understand when you read the book and you'll be able to process this through the God's Got This Moment tools. There's a few other ways that we can help you after you get the book. One, we have a free app that's available to you. You can go to the app store in Google Play and you'll be able to download this. I'll give the information on that here as well. And you can get to the hashtag God's Got This app. And there's all kinds of resources in there that we want to give to you for free that you'll be able to use in our community. And I'd love for you to have that. Uh, also, you'll be able to have the opportunity to get one more tool that goes along with the book. And I want to give that to you for free today as well. It's the God's Got This Moment identifier. It is a little way to dig a little deeper into some of those moments in your lives to give you some key phrases, some some words, some sentences that will help you to think of things that may spark a moment in your life that you had that you can start processing. So I want to give that to you as well. It's not in the book and uh, I wanted to make that for you available today for free. So a bunch of things that we're giving you today to help you um, be able to work with your time, to be able to go through things you've experienced in your life so that when those three words, anything is possible happen, whether it's a good anything is possible, an okay anything is possible, or really scary anything is possible, you're going to know that with God, anything is possible. I really do hope and pray today that it's been a blessing to you as you've joined us here in Hope Revealed and hashtag God's got this. And I want to share with you a scripture that is really important in my life that I hope will be as important to you. And it's found in Philippians verses 6 through 9 in chapter 4 of Philippians, something that Paul wrote, and I'd like to read it to you. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all that He's done. Then, you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what's true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you've learned and received from me, everything you've heard from me and saw me doing. Then, the God of peace will be with you. And he surely will, my friends. Now, I hope and pray you have an incredible, incredible week. That you can embrace the fact that anything is possible. And I hope you remember this. Don't ever forget. No matter what circumstance or situation you might find yourself in, 
God's got this.